Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to episode 67 of Lab Padres SpaceX and Starbase Weekly Updates. From ring stacks to SpaceX facts, we've got you covered. Now let's dig in. Starting off this week at the build site, one of Booster 12's liquid oxygen tank barrels received its so-called lead-ins ahead of stacking. These relatively small steel pins align ring sections while they are being joined together. After initial stacking preparations, this barrel was later moved into Mega Bay as SpaceX continues to move forward with building out their fleet of launch vehicles. As night was approaching Starbase, two large tanks were delivered following their long journey from Ohio. It later became evident that they will be used to hold water for the orbital launch mount's deluge system. As the clock approached midnight on Friday, Booster 12's liquid oxygen tank grew again as the aforementioned barrel was stacked. Consequently, the tank reached a height of 16 rings out of the total 24. Saturday at the launch site, the ship QD arm swung out of the way as the chopsticks started climbing the launch tower. They were likely obstructing access to the launch tower's side as additional cladding was later installed. Notably, it was the first time chopsticks were moved up since the integrated flight test almost two months ago. After a night stay at the Starbase sign near Sanchez, first of the two newly delivered water tanks were moved to the launch site for installation. SpaceX's LR-11000 crawler crane wasted no time as it hooked up to the tank and lifted it onto prepared pedestals situated just behind the orbital tower. Once the first tank's transportation rig had cleared Highway 4, the second tank made its way towards the launch site for its installation. After positioning the tank near the water deluge system pipework, the LR-11000 crane was connected and raised it onto its pedestals. This concluded the lifting operations for the day within only a few hours. Monday began with interesting progress on the new Mega Bay as its first corner section was lifted into place on the building's first level where it was quickly secured. At the launch site, a new water deluge system gas manifold was delivered. After being assembled in front of Mid-Bay for the past weeks, it will be part of the nitrogen pipework pressurizing the water deluge system. Continuing on Tuesday, Booster 12's liquid oxygen tank was stacked on another section, making it 20 out of 24 rings tall. It's now only awaiting the aft section, which will hopefully be moved out of Tent 1 for stacking soon. On Wednesday at the build site, the second section of Mega Bay 2 was being lifted, and just before touching down on the base level, the installation was aborted, likely due to high winds. After an almost two-month-long break from any form of vehicle testing at the launch site, Ship 25 finally escaped the monotony of orbital launch mount repairs. Sitting on Pad B, cryogenics were loaded into its tanks in an either aborted spin prime or a fully nominal cryotest. After two hours of tanking, Ship 25 was depressurized and detanked. The next day, more progress with the water deluge pie work was seen as a large angle section was lifted up by the LR-11000 crane and installed into place. Rapid stacking of Booster 12 continued as assembly of its liquid methane tank commenced in Mega Bay. The forward dome section with four grid fin holes was joined together with a ring barrel. Ending this week at Starbase, Booster 12's methane downcomber was lifted upright and installed into its liquid oxygen tank. This long steel tube is used to transfer fuel to the engines and acts as a header tank during boost back and re-entry phases of a booster's flight. Starting this week at Port Canaveral in Florida, Falcon 9 boosters 1077 and 1078 were seen awaiting refurbishment at the port. The next day, Booster 1078 was lowered onto the transporter in preparation for a move to SpaceX's refurbishment facilities at Roberts Road. On Monday, another Falcon 9 took to the skies as the Starlink G511 mission lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40, carrying 52 Starlink satellites into orbit. On Tuesday, Booster 1077 was lifted onto the dock as crews prepared to process another booster for its next launch. Two days after that launch, fairing halves from the Starlink G511 mission were brought back to Port Canaveral by SpaceX's recovery vessel Bob. 
Later that day, Doug towed a shortfall of Gravitas out to the ocean to support another landing of a Falcon 9 booster during Cetrio 1 mission, which is slated to launch this Sunday, June 18th. Only an hour later, Crosby Skipper towed the drone ship Just Read the Instructions with Falcon 9 Booster 1073 back into Port Canaveral. After initial inspections, Booster 1077 was lowered onto a transporter for a later move to Hangar X for refurbishment. Ending this week at Florida, routine lifting operations of Falcon 9 Booster 1073 took an unexpected turn as the load spreader suddenly detached and swung around. Crews later inspected the inner stage of the booster using a crane attached to a man basket. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. We'll see you next week and thanks for watching. Lab Padre, out.